how can we respond? So one of the things we have to do is lay out a uh, clear alternative. I was asked to write a um, health care plan for the Herman Cain team. And I certainly won't go through this now. It's, it's um, five guiding principles with 17 specific reforms. I'll just briefly read through the guiding principles. Um, and prior to medicine, I was in electrical engineering. So uh, when you're confronted with a complex circuit board, you'd absolutely never change 50 inputs all at the same time and have any prayer of understanding what you'd done to the system. The way you engage a complex system is you take one thing at a time. Take the most likely problem, fix it, see what happens. Take the second most likely problem, fix it, see what happens. So we craft a series of reforms, each reform addressing one clearly identified problem of the current system. Two, pass each reform separately. Three, write each bill using an understandable format and keep it to a reasonable length. Four, keep each bill clean, letting it pass or fail on its own merits. No pork, no payoffs. And five, <coughs> make the final language available to the public um, for a week prior to passing. And the first reform I start with is block granting Medicaid. And the reason that's so important is it really starts to address this Federalist question that we were discussing earlier. The problem with Medicaid as it stands now, it's a categorical grant. So when states want their money, they have to follow all these rules, all these strings that Washington's imposing on the states. If we switch Medicaid from a categorical grant to a block grant, it does two things. It gives states both a, a, an incentive and the ability to craft, craft lean, efficient Medicaid programs. So under the matching grant system, states are incentivized to increase their Medicaid spending and increase it and increase it and increase it because every time they increase it, they draw in federal dollars. <coughs> a block granting system limits the federal dollars a state gets but then says, craft your own system as best you can. And then I went through and listed several solutions that states could start to implement. And this is also a way to start to engage minorities, lower income Americans, those people, quote, in the system. There's a very fascinating study of about 900,000 post-op patients comparing Medicaid outcomes with insured and uninsured outcomes. There's actually a 25% higher mortality if you had Medicaid than if you had no insurance at all. So we can take the argument of compassion. If you're going to be worse off with Medicaid than no insurance, well, let's fix that program so we have decent outcomes. So we can use the argument of compassion to start to reach out to those people. The other thing we can do, and I do uh, public speaking in African American churches. This is C.L. Bryant. If any of you have seen the uh, movie Runaway Slave, He's uh, behind Runaway Slave. But we can take this <coughs> into uh, uh, African-American churches and lower-income communities. There's a fascinating graph that comes out of Pennsylvania. And it's a little hard to read, but the, the dark blue on the bottom is earned income from zero to $100,000. Earned income minus taxes. All the color bars on the left are subsidies. That's our social welfare system. It's fascinating. There's two cliffs right here at 29 and forty thousand dollars, where once you cross that earned income of more than twenty nine thousand dollars, your actual take home pay drops. So this is designed for mom with um, three kids. Imagine if you're a mom, three kids, and you have oh thank you, and you're uh, working at a restaurant waiting tables, making twenty nine thousand a year. Are you going to pull any extra shifts? Are you going to try move into management? Are you going to try and expand your education? Because you know as soon as you make more than 29000 a year, your take-home drops because you lose far more benefits than you get in pay. No, you stay at $29,000. Well, let's say you have an income of 40000 No, you won't. You have to increase your income from 29000 up to $69,000 uh, increase in benefits. So that's a $40,000 increase in earned income just to reach parity. It traps people in poverty. So we can take this message and say, you know, we can fix this system. Medicaid block grants are part of it and turn it into a system like this. 
you still have earned income minus taxes, you're still taking care of the un uninserved, but now you've given them the reason and ability to do what? To achieve the American dream. They can escape poverty. It's now in their best interest to go back to school, to get an extra job, to move from waitressing to management. So they can get out of poverty, so they want a message of hope. And giving states the ability to craft this kind of a social welfare system is part of what a Medicare, sorry, a Medicaid block grant would do.